so thanks everybody for coming. Uh, so today we're delighted to have Dervla Hogan as our speaker. So Dervla is working at Department Manager currently at the moment, and she recently did her PhD here in the department. So she's going to talk about her um, career pathway today, and I'm sure we'll get great insight into, I suppose, an alternative career pathway. So thanks very much, Dervla. No, thanks, Fiona. So um, as Fiona said, I'm Dervla Hogan. I work here as Department Manager in the Department of Epidemiology and Public Health. Um, so. I've been in the department since 2010, but I've been in this current role since about 2014. So kind of the way I'm going to do my talk is just a bit of background about me, really, I suppose, my education, my work experience. Also, how I kind of feel that perhaps the path you take isn't always the most linear path, but that doesn't mean it doesn't work. So, and even how your early, even childhood thoughts and experiences can still be reflected in what you're doing now. So I suppose um, this is definitely going to be more of a talk than a presentation, as I've said to a few people. You know, I recognize a lot of people in the room from our own department. So, and I've spoken to a few people to kind of just see the backgrounds that are in the room. So I'm feeling where, looking at people who in some cases might be perhaps thinking about doing a PhD or are doing a PhD or people who have, ha have done PhDs are in different roles now or also people who are working in administration and just want to kind of find out more about the, the area. So I hope I've encompassed everybody in that synopsis. If I haven't, we'll be having a bit of a questions and answers anyway at the end because I won't take the full time at all. So I suppose just me, I suppose I'm just going to really kind of start, I suppose in my early childhood, I suppose in primary school, the absolute thing I wanted to be was a primary school teacher. That is where I saw my life and my path and that is what I wanted to be. So by the time I got to Leaving Cert, I still had a desire to be a, uh, to be a primary school teacher, but one of the things I learned in secondary school was my love of science. My love of the science subjects, especially around biology and chemistry. But I do remember when we were, so when we were doing our Leaving Cert, we had our graduation mass and um, we had our yearbooks and everything. And um, so we were all voted in different areas. So what I was voted on was that in the years to come, I was most likely to become principal of a rundown rural primary school. <laughs> so I suppose slightly different to where I ended up, but I suppose what I'm trying to bring across is the education and kind of the teaching side and that that was where perhaps people saw me being. So it must have, I must have something in that area. So I suppose I have ended up in the right sector in that regard. So um, what I started in doing then in, well really when I was doing my leaving cert, what I wanted to do was I wanted to do the BSc in um, Biomedical Sciences. So it's a joint program between CIT and UCC. So that was absolutely my first choice on my CAO and with my leaving cert points I missed it by five points. So my next option then was to take the route of biological and chemical sciences degree here in UCC, where if you do that, um, if you get the correct kind of proper results in first year, you can move on and do the biomed modules in second year, and then you can do on, go on and do your degree <coughs> in biomedical sciences. But I suppose what I found was I got the results. I studied really hard in first year to get them results, get the results that were required for biomedical sciences. I went into it in second year, I did the modules, and I have to say I've never hated anything as much in my life. So it just showed me that sometimes what we think we want isn't what we actually will really enjoy. So having that taster was really good for me. Um, so what I realised in that year was that actually physiology was what I was enjoying. Physiology was what I wanted to do. So that's what I continued on for the final two years of my degree with. So I ended up with a BSc in Physiology. But by doing that, I also discovered something that I thought I might enjoy and didn't, which was being based in a lab. So I just found 
the lab experience, whilst it was very interesting to be getting the results and seeing what was happening, it can be a very isolating environment, or at least that's how I found it. So for me, I realised that that showed me that I needed to be in a career where I had more people interaction. And definitely, whilst I enjoyed science and that background, I had to be in something where I felt like I was interacting with people and helping people. So that led me to do the BSc in Occupational Health and Safety and Ergonomics in Galway. So in NUI Galway. Um, I actually, it was for a one-year master's, absolutely loved it, um, greatly enjoyed it. And I was very lucky that I finished my degree and I practically went straight into a graduate programme with uh, Chris Mee Safety Engineers. So they're, um, they're a health and safety um, consultancy company. Now they've become Chris Mee Group. They've a lot of different branches to them now than they had even when I was there. They have a recruitment branch and more around the carbon action, which is more around, I suppose, climate change branch and different things like that. So this was, so I worked initially for two years as a graduate health and safety consultant. And it was just the best experience ever because you were really thrown in, in the deep end. So, you know, whilst there was guidance and the, the manager was there behind you, you were expected from day one to step up. It was great, it was client focused, so you great interaction with people. Um, there was a lot of travel involved, which I suppose is what was my deciding factor for moving on in the end, was the level of travel involved. Um, whilst it sounds exciting and glamorous to be traveling all over the country and staying in hotels and everything, it's not as fun as it seems, especially I, I think the moment I had that realization was when one week I was in Mallow, I was in Limerick, I was in Dublin, and then I was back in Limerick, and then I was back in Cork on kind of five consecutive days. So I just realized at that moment, maybe this isn't for me. Um, but that was, but I did the two years as a, cons as a graduate, and then I was met permanent in the company, um, and I kind of worked there for another year. But during that year is really where I suppose I made my step into administration. So I had very much for the two years of my graduate program been an EHS consultant, so environmental health and safety consultant. I had also been seconded out to work in um, Alcon um, laboratories, as they were known at the time. They're now in under Novartis. Um, so as a, as a, a health and safety engineer. So I had had a lot of experience in that area, but what happened in that final year was that they were working towards accreditation with VTAC, which are now uh, QQI. So they're kind of the, the further education um, training body, and they were accrediting and validating our programs. So basically what we needed to do to get this validation was we needed to do a complete gap analysis of our whole training area, and we really just needed to get down into the depths of the issue. So the training manager asked my manager, could I assist with this? And I'd say for my last year, I was half and half. I was half based in the office, mainly working with the training department, so on more the administrative end of the organization, and half out in the field doing consultancy. But I have to say that by the end, that reduced more and more, and by the end, I was nearly practically with the training department, which was rare to happen. But it was just that seemed to be where my niche was. That was what I was enjoying. So that is the point that I pinpoint as when I realized my interest in administration. So within that year as well, I suppose, throughout my education, the option of doing a PhD had come up about tw actually twice. It had come up at the end of my, well, at the end of my degree, the option to do a master's by research had come up, which, which would have led to a PhD based on my final year project, which turned out much more interesting results than I think even my supervisor was expecting. So um, basically, he was asking would I continue on. At that point, I had realized bench science wasn't for me. So I made the decision to move out of there, and I went and did a taught master's. At the end of my master's in Galway, there were also some PhD opportunities um, available in the area. But I think at that point, I realized I had spent a lot of time in university. And I really just felt that 
for my own marketability and everything else, I needed to get out into the work world and I needed to get be working in industry and just getting that experience on the CV as well. So they were kind of the reasons why I didn't take these options that came up along the way. Um, but I suppose then there came a point when I was working, when I suppose my love of teaching, my love of education kind of returned. And I felt, right, I really do want to go down this PhD route, which to be entirely honest, I had no idea what that meant, but I wanted to do it anyway. So I, I had, I suppose, contacts in Galway. I had people I knew in Limerick. Um, I actually turned out that my contact here in UCC ended up being um, somebody whose parents grew up beside my grand, or who, who grew up beside my grandmother um, up in Galway. So um, it was a strange connection, but it worked. And through that, I got to meet uh, Dr. Birgit Reiner. And um, Birgit has been an inspiration, really, ever since. Um, Birgit is the academic director for our MSc and occupational health programs here in the department. And she was my primary supervisor for my PhD. And I really just can't speak highly enough, um, I suppose, about the support Birgit has given over the last six years. So I'll go back to why my PhD took six years in a few minutes. But Birgit has been both an inspiration, a support and a driver um, of what I have done. And I don't think I really would be where I am now without that, without herself and uh, Dr. Lendro Sullivan from the University of Limerick, who was my other supervisor. So when I first came in to start my PhD, um, um, there was a study, um, Birgit and um, Sheila Nolan, um, um, another researcher here at the time, were, um, had got funding from the Institute of Occupational um, Safety and Health to complete a study on physiotherapists and physical therapists in Ireland and their work-related musculoskeletal disorders. So I suppose I started working on the HIT study um, as a research assistant. And um, at that point, I didn't really have any thoughts that the HIT study would link with my PhD. I kind of had my own ideas about where I wanted to go with my PhD. Um, but over time, I started to realise, like I think all PhDs develop, I started to realise that actually the angle I was taking wasn't perhaps the, the best angle. So in essence, my PhD ended up um, leading back into the HIT study. And um, in the end, I looked at musculoskeletal symptoms in um, self-employed versus employed physiotherapists and physical therapists. And I looked at the role of training and social support in that relationship. So one of the things during my PhD, I have consistently worked. So I have consistently either worked part time up to about three days a week in the start when I worked as a research assistant with HITS. Then I moved on to being a research administrator with the SPHERE program, which is our structured PhD um, um, program in population health and health services research. And um, I also worked on the HRB Centre for Health and Diet Research as well during that time. And as I said, since September 2014, I've been in the role of department manager here. So definitely for the last two years of my PhD, which I've been doing part time based on working, I was working in a, quite a busy full time role. So the one thing that that taught me, well, firstly, it taught me time management um, because you have to have it if you're trying to be at the stage of completion. But it also showed me my own determination and stubbornness in relation to the fact that I wanted to get it done, I was going to get it done. Within the university I was very aware of the attrition rate for people doing PhDs part-time and working full-time and I was very conscious and determined in my own mind that I wasn't going to become another statistic in that area. So um, I submitted my PhD in October of 16 I had my Viva in December of 16, and I'm now going to graduate on the 15th of June. So I'm just very happy that I know I have the resilience and the stubbornness to achieve that. And I know that that in itself is a transferable skill into the workplace. You know, to have that determination to get something completed and to have that passion for something. 
I think in relation to um, working in administration and having a PhD, um, I think, you know, one of the things people can often ask you is, well, you could do the job before, what can you bring to it now? So I suppose, yes, I could very much do the job before and I don't think I can necessarily do the job any better or worse than I did before. But I do think that internally in my own mind, I have a different thought process, I have a different way of thinking than I did before. So I do think that that is a strong benefit. So in relation to the department here, um, just to kind of move into more of what I actually do on a daily basis. So we have the head of department who um, I'm, I suppose in essence, I'm a strong administrative and I suppose sounding, administrative support and sounding board for the head of department in respect to decisions and queries and everything like that. And basically at the other end, I'm also a support when required or needed to the range of staff we have in the department. So our academic staff, our research staff, our doctoral students, and our excellent administrative staff, who I just can't praise enough, to be honest, and who make my life a lot more easy. Um, so what I feel in this role you need to be, and I think it ties back to the things I learnt along my journey, you have to be a person who likes people. So you have to be somebody that likes people, you have to be someone who's personable, you have to be someone who understands how to work with people and how to work with different people. And you, if, if I'm talking to people who have a PhD and they're thinking of moving into administration, you have to be comfortable taking that background supporting role. So you have to be very comfortable with the fact that you'll be supporting a department or a project where the outputs, for example, publications, um, research grant money coming in, it won't be your name against it. But you will have had a major background role in ensuring that that has been achieved. So you have to be very comfortable with that and you have to be very happy in that space, which I have to say I am. That's, that's what I enjoy. Um, is that background space. So I suppose in relation to the department, we have um, quite a number of teaching programs and quite a number of ranges of delivery. So with our campus-based programs, we're very much driven in the online direction now and we're moving more towards a blended format between the two as well. So we have our <coughs> We have our um, undergraduate, core undergraduate program, the BSc um, in Public Health, which is now going to become the BSc in Public Health Sciences. Uh, we have postgraduate cert in Health Protection. We have our MPH. We have our Masters in Occupational Health. We have doctoral level training program at Sphere, and we're very much involved in medical teaching as well. And I suppose from my role as um, department manager here, one of my main areas is in kind of the research administration end. So administering uh, a large number of the research grants along with some other colleagues. And we have quite a range of research areas. <clears throat> so uh, food and health with the health services research, population and public health research, occupational health. And we also look at suicide and self-harm epidemiology and prevention. So I suppose in kind of closing one of the things I had to think very deeply about and I kind of thought about it more in the middle of my PhD and I have started to think about it again now that I'm at the end is what what do I want what route do I want to take the way I see it and we can discuss this because I'm sure other people have other ideas is when you have the PhD you have about three routes from a, from, from a university, well, from being in a university, let's say, if you're based in a university, you've got three options. So your first option is to take that, you know, core academic route. So you take your postdoc, you work up along perhaps research fellow into the um, lecturer and beyond levels. Uh, you have the option to go outside of the university as option two. So you can go out into maybe other, other public bodies in research area, or you can move out into the private sector. 
so into maybe pharma or medical device or some just different areas like that or your final option within the university is that you can take the administrative route so you can take the route of going into administration within the university so i sat down i very much thought about these so my thoughts on the academic route were that I, uh, I, you know, I work with a lot of academic colleagues. I see what they go through. I know, the, I know what the jobs entail. And I know I don't have the passion to put up with what the jobs entail. So I knew that wasn't for me. When I looked at private industry, I felt I had done private industry. I wasn't really sure where I would fit in it. So it wasn't really one that I put too much thought into. I kind of moved past it. And I moved on to the administrative side. So either we're talking about academic research, academic administration, research administration, administration within central services in UCC. The administrative route is not easy. It's not any more or less difficult than the academic route, if you're talking about the demands of your role. But I feel it's demands I'm willing to put up with, demands I enjoy doing. So therefore, I feel that's what has made me do it, is that it's a different heart, but it's an enjoyable heart. So that's why I kind of like it. You know, even I was at an event recently given by the research office where they were talking about um, US funding, and I suppose kind of the research administration of US funding and kind of talking about eligible costs, ineligible costs, different things. And I have to say, I found it the most enjoyable day ever, but I honestly know that there are many people who would, who would be bored stiff by it. So it's about where your interest lies. So I think in closing, what I feel is that no matter what route you take, you know, after a PhD, um, do what you love and you'll never be bored. That would be my advice. So, thank you.